All right, so what I want to look at today is let's let's do a quick case setting up external aerodynamics with surface wrapping. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is just like always, we're going to bring in a part. Now this can be a CAD file. Uh, in my particular case, I'm going to take the easy way out. I'm going to use a DBS file. Now a DBS file is just a star CCM plus transmit file. This is essentially an STL with boundary names. Uh, so this way I don't have to necessarily go through and name all the different parts of my bike. Just because I want to showcase more or less surface wrapping, not necessarily naming boundaries. So we've got a bike. Check number one is how do I understand whether or not this is going to need to be surface wrapped. So right click on your part and go to repair. It'll fire up the repair mode. And now in version 6.04, when you fire up repair, you'll notice that it won't bring in the repair diagnostics by default. So we'll go ahead and start diagnostics in case you want to check that. And I don't really care about face quality or proximity because these are more checks for after I've remeshed the surface. So when these diagnostics turn on, what we'll see is a bunch of pierced faces. Now, there are tools within Star CCM Plus to go through and manually fix all this stuff. But as you all know, you know, going through and manually imprinting these to get these surfaces to line up and going through and you know, zipping edges to get the headlights to zip into the surface, you know, this stuff can get tedious. So at this point, I can make the judgment I do need to surface wrap because there's a lot of manual work that I have to do to fix up a lot of these kind of errors. So I'm going to extract the surface using a surface wrapper. All right, so next thing, since I want to do an external aerodynamics case, I want to create a wind tunnel for this to be simulated in. So let's go ahead and create a new block. And you can see here I've created a block. And what I want to do is let's make it a little bit up, upstream, downstream. And generally, you want to have things larger uh, than your bike. But remember, whenever you're doing an external aerodynamics study, always try to compare as closely to wind tunnel as possible. Wind tunnels make a big difference in drag. So now that I've got my box created, the one thing I notice is when I'm in perspective mode, it's a little bit difficult to see. So a lot of times when I'm creating these boxes, I'll go into parallel mode. So that way I can kind of line up my tires a little bit easier. So now I've got my box created. So I'll hit create and close. Again, one of the advantages of parts is I can always modify this at any time going through and just changing these coordinates. All right, so I've got my block. Let's go ahead and split this thing up to inlet and outlet. I'm going to split by patch. We'll pull out, uh, we'll call this the in. Back here will be the out. And then floor. And I'm a big fan of lazy. So you notice I selected the ones that were the easy single clicks because I could have always selected these last three. But again, that's three clicks. And so what I want to do is just rename these three that are left. So always try to do things the easiest way, the simplest, the fewest number of clicks. So we're going to call these the sides. All right, so I've got my block and my bike. Now what I want to do is I want to send these two parts to one region. So I'm going to assign parts to regions. I want one region for all parts because remember, I'm going to have one air volume extracted. And I want one boundary per part surface. So that way I get my in, out, and sides and all my different parts of my bike. So I'll create regions and close. You notice now I'll have one region, so we can call this thing, oops, call this thing air. And you'll see inside of air, we've got all the boundaries. Great. So I've created my region from my parts, and now I want to create my continua. So I need to tell it how I want to mesh. So go ahead and right click, select meshing models, and let's remesh the surface. But first, just like we decided from looking at the repair tool, I need to wrap. Let's so bring in the trimmer to fill up the volume, put some prism layers near the wall. Now you can always extend the inlets and outlets with the extruder. I'm not that worried about it. All right, so let's start out by making a base size. Now remember, your base sizes are always going to be the, thing, the size that you want to scale everything else to. So it could be a characteristic length or it can be just some arbitrary reference that helps you understand where to scale everything else by. So let's say that I want most of my cells to be about one inch, so 12 millimeters, all over the surface of the bike. Now, it's allowed by default to go down to three millimeters and up to 12. So you can always change these on the global level, but generally I don't. So let's look a little bit further. So uh, maximum cell size defaults to 10,000. Uh, I don't really need that, so let's go. Uh, uh, the trim mesh is always going to be a doubles, so we're going to go uh, 204 and 800, 1600, 
uh, let's do 3200. So about a third of a meter for the largest size. Two prism layers I'm okay with. Prism layer thickness at 33%. Uh, I don't like my thickness off my uh, base size. I like to keep that at a constant value. So I always know that, let's say, my prism layer is always going to be within two millimeters of the surface, no matter how I change my base size. And as we go down here, I've got my surface size I saw I'm okay with. Uh, the wrapper feature angle and wrapper scale factor are two active features of the surface wrapper. Now, the feature angle is simply the angle between any two triangles that will be flagged after the wrapper as a surface uh, feature curve. So, 30 degrees is the default. I generally leave this the same. The other thing that I change uh, is the wrapper scale factor. And you'll see the wrapper scale factor is essentially a scaling factor for how the wrapper approaches the geometry. So in my case, with a 12 millimeter base size, I'm gonna wrap everything at 80% of that 12 millimeter base size. So you always wanna wrap a little bit finer than your remesh. And the one thing is never take this setting down below 50% because you're gonna be capturing geometry that you won't really even be able to remesh. So I always generally keep this value somewhere between you know 60 and 80%. And you can expand those a little bit on either side for extraneous cases, but generally keep it in that range. All right, so that's my base size. Now, as I move farther down, I have a volumetric control. Now I can always put in and volumetric control in the wake zone. So let's go ahead and do that. So I wanna create a new part again, I create a block, and I want this one just generally around the bike. So we're gonna make this just upstream, downstream of the bike. Now you'll notice my screen is kind of flipping between the different axes, F front, side, and top, I'm hitting F, S, and T on my keyboard in order to flip between those. So to create my volumetric control, I'm gonna new, and I wanna select a part group, and it's gonna be the block that I just created, so block two. And in this particular area, I wanna refine the wrapper, I wanna find the remasher, and let's refine uh, the trimmer. I'll do an isotropic size. Now. Anywhere that's inside of this block, I want to make sure that we stay in the neighborhood. Well, actually, let's bump this up. Let's say anywhere inside of here, we're going to be at 48 millimeters. So anywhere inside of this block, the volume mesh is going to be 48 millimeters, and it's going to keep that surface size down to 48 millimeters, especially when it grows out on this far field surface. So it's not necessarily going to refine anywhere, but it's going to keep the surface meshers and surface wrappers from growing. Because when I go down to my individual boundaries, I'm going to say, all right, on all these surfaces here, I want to edit them all at once. And we'll do a custom surface size of 3200 to match my maximum size that I'm going to set for the trimmer, which I set up top. So now out in the far field, it's allowed to grow out to 3200. But within that block, it's going to keep to 400% uh, of my base size. All right, so the final thing before we get going, let's make our velocity in, velocity, our out, our pressure, and my sides, let's go ahead and make symmetry planes, because technically these shouldn't affect the flow in any way if they're far enough away. All right, so I've done all the settings. I make my parts to regions. I've just find all my continual level settings, done my volumetric controls, done my custom surface sizes, so I'm ready to go ahead and generate a test mesh here. So. Let's go ahead and surface mesh. All right, now that my surface mesh is finished, let's go ahead and make a new mesh scene and take a look at uh, our geometry. All right, so here's our far field. Eh, it's a little bit fine. We could probably get away with coursing it up a little bit, but I'm not gonna worry about it. So let's get down to the bike level. So we can see we've captured a lot of the geometry here. We've got a nice clean closed surface representation, the curvature refinement all the way down to the level of the spring. So that's pretty good. Now. What I'm noticing is I've got this jumbles right here on the surface between the floor and the tire. We might make this a little bit more highlighted if we go ahead and change our color mode to distinguish type or distinguish parts. You can see here that I've got uh, you know kind of these jumps. And what's happening here is the surface wrapper is trying to distinguish where the tire ends and where the floor begins. So if I look at my wrapped surface representation, you might be able to see this a little bit closer. So the surface wrapper by default is going to be refining on curvature. So in this particular case, it's refined to this level, but out here on the floor, it's a much larger surface. So there's no reason to refine. So it's kind of having trouble 
getting cells into these concave, concave surfaces. So we have actually have a tool within StarCM Plus to fix this. And you'll see the same thing here happens on the uh, tire to the wheel well. So we need to add another setting to the surface wrap. And this is what we call contact prevention. And what contact prevention does is tell the surface wrapper, all right, I want these two surfaces to be separated, separated to a certain level. So let's create a new contact prevention, one group. And let's say I want the tires and the floor. So front tire, rear tire, and let's go to the floor. So what is this surface here? So in case you're ever curious about what a surface is, just go ahead and click it in the scene. You'll see, so this is the splash. So I want to add the splash there as well. And I want Star CCM Plus to guarantee these two surfaces don't touch each other till they're, say, two millimeters apart. So if they're closer than two millimeters, it'll jump across the gap just like you see here. But if they're more than two millimeters, it won't. It'll maintain them as two separate surfaces. So now I'm going to go ahead and regenerate my surface mesh. So now you see by the addition of this contact prevention set, we've actually gone in between and refined inside of the gap between the tire and the splash guard. And you'll see the same exists on the floor here. So it's very, very easy to get a complex geometry surface wrapped within Star Citizen Plus. And always remember, make your top level settings up in your continua, then do some volumetric controls, and then get down to your surface sizing. And when you're surface wrapping, always remember that you can do contact prevention sets. So this is generally how you set up surface wrapped cases in Star CCM Plus. Thank you.